carriers have to keep on the move to avoid becoming targets. The Hornet completed her training exercises and headed for the Panama Canal and then to San Diego to load a surprise. James Doolittle had an idea. During April, the Enterprise had long been pushing west and north at flank speed, attended by extra oil tankers. It was getting colder every day. The winter gear came out. Even the repair crews stationed deep in the Enterprise could tell that they were headed toward Japan of all places an uneven match ten times over. What the hell? Crazy. When the Enterprise began to slow to a halt in the middle of the ocean's nowhere, many came up to take a look. Another ship's hulk loomed through the mist as the Enterprise closed in on it. It could be a carrier as per its bottom profile, but the top profile was all wrong. Some things big and brown were there, not painted with any navy blue, and they seemed to hang over the deck. In April 1942, the aircraft carrier Enterprise strangely heed toward Japan and stopped near an odd-looking ship. It was the Hornet, and she was carrying 16 Army B-24 bombers, modified for more distance, each one having a crew of four. The ship's signals flashed and both carriers were soon off toward Japan. The plan was to hit about 24 critical targets all over Japan and then fly on to land in the parts of China not yet controlled by the Japanese. However, along the way the carriers were spotted by a Japanese patrol boat that was able to get a message out. The bombers had to launch right away, albeit still several hundred kilometers from the planned launch point. Hornet turned into the wind. James Doolittle took off first, having the least amount of deck space, 15 bombers parked right behind him. He and they had to fly off left of the center line, the left wing hanging over the left side of the carrier, to avoid the ring wing hitting the control tower, which kind of takeoff caused turbulence. Doolittle made it, followed by 15 more. The carriers and their fleets turned about and raced towards home, their boilers going full blast. The hits on Japan were as 24 Mini 9 to 11S, but of course, Britain had survived hundreds of these during the Blitz, but the psychological damage devastated the Japanese. They hurried up their plan for the attack on Midway. Somehow, Tokyo and the rest of Japan had been bombed by 16 U.S. Army B-24 bombers. Since the enemy was at a loss as to where they could have come from, it was leaked that they had come from the no longer so mythical Shangri-La Island, and that there were more to come, although we couldn't really pull it off again. Meanwhile, in the Battle of the Coral Sea, in May 1942, the Lexington was hit by two torpedoes and some bombs and we damaged Suikaku and the Suikaku. Poor Lady Lex had gone to the bottom. We had tried to tow her. Yorktown received great damage, made some repairs, and slowly headed for Pearl. 
Saratoga was still under repair in San Diego. The Battle of the Coral Sea had ended. It was kind of a draw, but the Japanese now had two less carriers available to attack Midway. We had but three operational carriers left, the Triplet Sisters, Yorktown, Hornet and Enterprise if they could make it home. Many of the Doolittle bomber pilots survived after having done much more than just a little.